Hi darlings, I'm Brian and you're watching The Brian Darling Show. Many of you know that I'm a very active volunteer at the LA Gay and Lesbian Center, of which I'm very passionate about. I draw a lot of energy from being in that community, and I am so excited. I'm not going to wait another minute. I have here, right here, darlings, the CEO of the Los Angeles Gay and Lesbian Center, and her name is Lori Jean. Hi, Lori. How are you? Hi, Brian. I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. Oh my gosh. Geez, I haven't seen you in, what, four days now? We sure had a fun party the other day. <laughs> we sure did, and it was great to have you at our Anniversary Gala Vanguard Awards. Well, you know, we always get a picture every year, you and me, and this year's photo, we we were perfectly color coordinated. I just posted <laughs> it up on Twitter. We are so photogenic, i got to tell you. <laughs> What are the things that uh, you're seeing uh, people walking in the door? What services are people needing these days? Well, you know, Brian, it's really been somewhat uh, astonishing to me that in these times of phenomenal, phenomenal progress uh, in our society for LGBT people, uh, there are some people who would think, well, gosh, you know, there isn't so much a need for LGBT community centers anymore. And in fact, we're seeing exactly the opposite. Uh, this summer, uh, and early in the fall, we have seen record high uh, number of youth coming to us for our homeless youth services. We've seen record high numbers of people coming to us for medical care. Uh, if you look at what's been happening in our seniors program in the last couple of years, the numbers of seniors has tripled. It's really sort of across the board. We're just seeing more and more people who are coming to us for services and help. And, you know, sometimes I think that it's almost as if all the progress that we're making, all of our increased visibility in TV, in film, on the internet, is uh, actually resulting in LGBT people feeling freer to come to the LA Gay and Lesbian Center for help. I agree uh, with you. I agree with you on that. Um, as you know, I've been a very loyal and active volunteer. I am one of over 3,000 volunteers at the LA Gay and Lesbian Center and all of us do something different. I'm so unique and, and enigmatic and eclectic that <laughs> one of the things that I really love is AIDS life cycle and that's a 545 mile bike trip down the coast of, uh, of California. They start in San Francisco, they end up in Los Angeles and Laura you've done that ride haven't you? That's right I've done it three times as, as a cyclist and of course I've been there, gosh, 15 times or something uh, as a member of the staff. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they hear uh, about a community center, they think of it as a small storefront organization, and people often have no idea that the LA Gay and Lesbian Center is the largest LGBT organization on the face of the planet. Uh, in addition to those 3,000 volunteers, we have 405 full-time staff, more than 25,000 people come to our five locations every single month. And uh, so we are really a very large organization that relies on our 3,000 volunteers um, to get the job done. And the AIDS life cycle is our biggest fundraiser. Uh, we do that in partnership with the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. And um, this last year, gosh, what did we raise, Brian? It was well over $13 million. $14.2 million. $14.2 <laughs> I love saying, well, you know I'm the numbers guy, so I really like, I, I really like talking about the numbers. That's uh -huh. what me, makes sense to me. But speaking of numbers, Lori, I want, before I forget, I want to I wanna just say thank you personally from me to you. You are a friend, a mentor, a leader. Um, when you read, darlings, when you read Lori Jean's profile that I posted on my website, your jaw is just going to drop to the floor. This woman is so accomplished in so many different areas. But You're making yes. me blush, Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time for this. You know that, my dear. <laughs> aloha, Lori. Yes, aloha. Yay. Hawaii has joined the fray finally. Yay. Well, hopefully, you know, now I think it, it'll be kind of cool to be a bridesmaid. Uh, <laughs> 
Because <laughs> we'll all get to go out to Hawaii for the wedding. That'll be kind of fun. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so, but what I wanted to tell you, Lori, is the thing that impresses me, I think, most about the center is when I donate a dollar to the center, 83 cents of that dollar is used directly for client services. And you That's run. Right. It's even a little bit better than that, depending on on uh, on what you do. Our overhead rate on our last audited financials was under 12 percent. Oh but my gosh. Uh, you know, I don't really like to focus on overhead very much. I'm a fan of of the current conversation that's happening in the nonprofit world about uh, donors uh, need to be looking at overhead as one measure, but also things like uh, results, how successful the organization is in, in performing its mission, and uh, of course I think that the center rises to the top on all of those measures as well. Oh, absolutely, especially in the, the LA Unified School System. Tell us about these badges. You know, this is an amazing story, Brian, that we never anticipated was going to come out the way it did. Uh, we have a, a great project with the LA Unified School District and a number of collaborative partners that we started called Project SPIN, uh, a Suicide Prevention Intervention Now. It's a lot more than an anti-bullying campaign. We don't want any of our youth to ever even have the thought of suicide enter their heads. And we've been working with the LA Unified School District, which is the nation's second largest school district, now for quite a number of years. And Sarah Train, who runs that project, is just a phenomenal uh, visionary and uh, hard worker. And um, collectively, uh, you know, she and the center had this idea of what if every single openly LGBT person in the LA Unified School District or LGBT ally, be they teachers, cafeteria workers, um, janitors, bus drivers, administrators, what if all of them wore a badge with their normal IDs that showed that they were a safe space for LGBT kids? Uh, we called it our Out for Safe Schools campaign. And we thought, just imagine the difference that that would make to our kids who so often feel bullied or scared and alone and this yeah. would be a way to show them that they weren't alone so we convinced the LAUSD of this and they offered these badges to all of their employees and Brian we were blown away by the fact that 30,000 people 30,000 wow. people requested badges. We had to go back and make a ton more because we had only made a few thousand. That, and that's just so imagine amazing. that. It really is all about our kids. Yes, I'm so happy that, that the center um, has a lot of seniors programs because I'm going to be, a, we're all going to be seniors someday. Hey, the, <laughs> they define us now as over 50. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, I'm only 39 and holding. That's well, that's as far too. as I go. Yes, we are <laughs> on the Darling show. No one is ever anything other than that. But it it really is our kids. It makes me sad to know that there are homeless LGBT youth out there and the and I don't even want to go into the stories of how they get there, but you know what kids there is a place for you to go, especially in Los Angeles. I want to talk about that little building across the street from the village. One of the campuses is called the Village at Ed Gold Plaza, and it's a it's a lovely courtyard setting. Uh, it's got a theater. The LifeWorks Youth Program is there. The AIDS Life Cycle offices are there. The gallery is there. I've spent a lot of time there. It's really fun to go there because you never know what you're going to see in that courtyard. And Lori made a big announcement at the gala, and I'd like to hear that again for our darling show viewers. Yes. Um, for uh, a number of years now, the LA Gay and Lesbian Center has been growing by leaps and bounds. And even though we have five different locations, we are bursting at the seams. And so we looked at that property across the street from the village, our second largest site, and uh, we knew that that would be an ideal site to expand. But the state owned it. 
So we convinced the state to put it on the surplus property list, and on October 25th, I signed the purchase agreement for that property. Yes. And we are going to raise the fairly dilapidated building that is on it, and we are going to build a new campus unlike anything that exists in the LGBT world. Uh, we are going to move all of our youth and senior services there and expand them and consolidate them and we instead of having 50 beds for homeless youth we will have three times that we also are going to build a first of its kind multi-generational affordable housing apartment complex for seniors and youth and uh, we'll move our administrative headquarters over there so that the building that I'm in right now the McDonald Wright building will become entirely a medical center with medicine, mental health services, and research for our entire community. And the campus that we'll be creating near the village is going to provide wraparound services to youth and seniors who reside with us and any from out from our community. They'll be able to live there, they'll be able to walk across the street, see a show at the village, get services, everything they need is going to be right there. And this is going to be a very expensive project. Uh, we're going to have to raise at least $25 million in a capital campaign. It'll cost us quite a bit more than that. And uh, probably take us about four years to complete. I, if all goes well, we'll open late in 2017 or early in 2018. Oh, well, this is a call to action, darlings. You don't have to donate money. You can donate time. You can donate clothing. You can donate your, your life experience. You can get involved with the LifeWorks program and become a mentor to LGBT teens. I've done some work with the LifeWorks program. It is amazing. And Lori, you're at all these events. I, I don't know how you do it. Your scheduler is top notch. <laughs> I just want to thank you for all of the years that you have dedicated to this organization. As a volunteer, the dollars you've donated, the other people you've enlisted to get involved, including your company. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of uh, renaissance person volunteer that really makes the difference for us in our work. And so um, you're a lot more than a, than a pretty face and uh, internet to sensation. You're, you're a wonderful human being, and I thank you very much for that. Oh, thank you, and and you know I love you. I'll be, I'll have a very large volunteer team this year uh, at AIDS Life Cycle, and I've noticed that other companies are bringing volunteer teams. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I first came down, it was you know there's always what three or four hundred volunteers that that run the closing ceremony part of the mm -hmm. event, but now I'm seeing Bank of America, Wells Fargo, American Airlines big companies that everybody knows and they're a part of our community and they support our community and we support them so yes it's like we're we're riding a new wave of acceptability in the mainstream world that's unlike anything I've seen in my you know two decades at the center and even before that as an activist uh, so we're making a lot of progress we need to take advantage of it while it lasts did you ever think we would see this you know, um, I'm a little I, overwhelmed, uh, actually. Uh, I mean, I certainly believe that we would make enormous progress and that we would eventually win. Uh, and of course, we're a long way from from complete victory. But I tell you that the freedom to marry has happened far more quickly than I ever anticipated that it would. I would like to invite our Darling Show uh, viewers to contact me at BrianDarling.com and you can schedule a free tour to go down and actually see the center and they even do the tours very efficiently they're one-hour tours they start on time they end on time this woman runs a really tight ship Lori Jean thank you so much for joining me today thanks Brian I was really happy to be here <laughs>